First, as, as far as Supreme goes, we have the rarest Supreme collection in the world. Uh, this is like a... Uh... Yo, I gotta give a huge shout out to privacy.com for making this video possible today. Privacy.com allows you to use virtual cards to buy things online, thus protecting your bank information and identity information. Everyone who buys a lot of gear online, especially you sneakerheads, honestly needs to check this out. Stay tuned for the very end of the video. Me and Andrew are gonna be going over our must cop supreme accessories. Andrew, Woo. do you feel the significance right now? I can feel it in the air. It's very humid. Multiple people have told us, oh man, the weekend said it. The weekend mentioned Queen Street, so you gotta go on Queen Street. I said, okay, we'll go to Queen Street. Used to roll on Queen, now I'm <laughs> We are on the most culturally impactful street in Toronto. Yes. Not Toronto. Toronto. Soft tea. You gotta say it with the soft tea. Today we're gonna be doing a Toronto streetwear and sneaker episode. We're hitting up two shops in two different areas of the city. One in downtown Toronto, OD. It's like the hypest store in all of Toronto. And then we're gonna go into a different scene to check out the Yorkdale Mall. We have our crawl today hosted by Sam. Well, what up, Sam? What up, Local what up, guys? What up, what up, what up? Sneakerhead, what up, Sam. AKA Average Asian, AKA whatever you wanna call me. Wait, wait, why, why, why Average Asian? What's oh, up with that? Uh, it's just because, like, you know, when you're younger, you get stereotyped as an Asian, so what does that mean? It can mean one thing. It can mean two things. It's either you're actually just average, or you're just smart. And so we're headed into OD Toronto right now, and uh, I heard this is the premier just subculture streetwear sneaker store in all of the city. I would say city, I would say Canada, and I would even say North America. Toronto streetwear, let's go. All right, you guys, we are here with the owner of OD Toronto, Shot. What up, man? What up, man? How are you? You good? Doing good, man. Thanks for having us. Tell us a little bit about your spot because immediately when you walk in, it definitely feels like it, it's like you got all the hype stuff, but then you also got the sports stuff going on too. Yeah. So like we spent four years curating the rarest stuff, curating stuff just for Toronto. We have the team here, like what Toronto's about. So rare decks, art, sneakers, streetwear. There's a car in the bag. There's something for everybody. So would you say before you guys opened up OD, was it was it like split up? Was like this store doing this and that store doing that? Or were you guys like, there really wasn't a place like this where it was kind of a, the best of everything? There wasn't a place like this, like a place that Toronto deserved. We had little small spots, but we like Toronto is one of the biggest cities in the world. We needed a spot like this, so we had to do it big. After being out here for a little bit, I feel like Toronto, the street where And sneakers, it is tied with basketball heavily. Yeah. Especially, like, is that what you guys really wanted to do here? Sure, the culture is music, basketball, sneakers, like, everything's tied together. So it's just culture, Toronto culture. And, like, we have one of the most multicultural teams in the world, right? We have Jeremy Lin, we have everybody. So it just speaks to who Toronto is, like, what Toronto is. So tie it all together in a store. Oh, man. Immediately, I think the first thing you, you know, when we were talking, you were just like, whoa, you guys have, what, the only complete we Supreme have, we Court? Have, we have the first complete deck collection. The second one sold at auction for 800K. You don't get to see this in Toronto. It was an era in this game that wasn't on StockX, that people, when you were legit checking, you have to know a lot about the culture, you need to know a lot about the production. So a lot of these decks, you'll never see on a StockX, like LVs, there was a cease and desist on these. So a lot of these even come damaged because everybody skated them. You don't, you don't get this type of collection in like a week. You take, it, this takes years. You gotta know a lot of people. You gotta meet a lot of people. You gotta beg a couple people to bring these back out and sell them. Like a lot of people didn't want to sell these things, right? They've been with them for so long. So yeah, this is, this is another one they got a cease and desist for. Just crazy art with religious imagery and Michael Jordan. These are one of our oldest decks right here. The two copyright decks. Bro, this has been skated like, on, right? In this collection is rare. Like in this condition, it's super rare. Like even look how damaged it is. Even in this condition, it's super hard to get like this. The hero deck. So they did the three production versions and they did the one sample yellow. So we have the full deck collection plus the samples. As far as Supreme goes, we have the rarest Supreme collection in the world. Like I can stand by that easily, Any anything. Anything, like we have a lot of pieces we haven't even shown people yet. You don't have to give too much away, but I guess your connections is it is that you guys got people who have been in the game for, for decades. It's really just being nice to people and people introducing you to other people. 
because you can't come into this game with the arrogance. You right. have to be willing to like meet people, be nice to people. You meet someone who introduces you to someone who might have been working for Supreme since day one. Right. So you get a couple of pieces there. Everything is like a secret. You kind of have to meet the right people. Right. So you said it's not just like some kid that's just like parents own a own a factory can just no. be like, let me throw money no, at everybody. Right. No, 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 no. This was built through organic connections, yeah. man. 100%. The Canadian way, being nice. <laughs> this is just like any store you go to, they'll have a couple of the new ones. They'll have the Yankees, CDGs. We give everybody, like, if you're a serious collector, we have some samples up here, the Malakian samples. We have the LVs, high fashion. You have some of the opening day t-shirts, Damien Hurst. This is a double XL box logo tee. So like double XL, they might have released one of them at the store. Three Six Mafia tee, the t-shirt from the Three Six Mafia shoot. Ooh, it's a legendary. This is Harajuku opening tea. A lot of, a lot of history here. Like we said, like we said, I feel like you know, being more into the box logo game, the skate deck game. That's another level. Like I just want people to come and ask me, what is that, and just go tell their friends about it. It's just cool, like for people to be educated about this. Uh, personally, which one do you, do you like the story the most behind, or is your, is your favorite? It's got to be one of the uh, Japanese opening days, the Shibuya or the Harajuku, like. Japan really was at the forefront of bringing Supreme to the masses. They were, they were the original people to start collecting it. Right, right. That's so, why they have so many stores there. Right? Yeah, yeah. So like their opening tees like were very, very special. Those meant a lot. And then you guys are also carrying your own merch over here, I see. Yeah, we have the mural tees with the mural outside. Okay. We did three murals here. Yes. Like just something for the city. It's not just about clothing and that like consumer stuff. Stuff for the city. I mean that's what I appreciate about OD ODTO is that like it was something for the city during the championship run. 100%. So many people would just come out, take pictures of the mural, and just it was awesome. That's man. It. No, I'm glad like that's the awesome. exact response we were looking for. Yeah. If I were to go to New York tomorrow and try to open this up in a year, it's not gonna be the same shop. That's you know right. what I mean? A lot of like the personality of this shop is us. For me myself, I'm more of a sneaker guy, right? So I just I'm, I'm vaguely familiar because I've seen the drops and the lookbooks and things like that or on Instagram. What is the significance of Supreme Accessories to people? And, and is it different? Because you know how some people, like, they just care about the box logo part. Some people are really into the accessories part. Some people only care about the sneakers aspect. And obviously there's some people who care a little bit about everything. Yeah, so you know like collectors, once we start something, it's a <laughs> deep, deep rabbit hole, right? And this was the most affordable stuff. You go to Supreme, you would get an accessory for $20, but now you have to collect all the accessories. So now it became a super collectible thing. And once you started collecting, you can't really ever stop. Cause now I need a dog bowl. Do you know what I mean? Right. I need two dog bowls now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is like a... Uh, this is insane. Uh, this is like oh, Ben God. Baller's crib, but times, times three. Times we got my man over here, Pudsy. But we won them at an auction, a uh, BBC Children's auction, for 106,000 US. It's the most expensive Supreme item of all time. That was designed by Kim, Kim Jones. Jones for his dog. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when we bought this, like the the organization didn't even know how to accept donations like that. So they're used to $10 donations, $20. This one oh. kind of broke them. Oh, yeah. Nice. Which is good. So like, it took us like a couple of months to get the money over to them. Up here, I brought up a bunch of the rarest box logos in the world. Some of these are one of ones, one of twos. We know of two that exist of the white smoking gun. So this one, when it came out, around the same time this was sampled, there was like problems with gun violence in the States. So I ended up scrapping this. We know of two of these in existence and only one black in the world. Wow. If, if somebody comes through with the right amount, are you guys, and you're like, they're like, yo, I can. We got offered 200K for the bear, but that's like family. And like this store, if you sell all the rare stuff, this store is just like everybody else. You kind of need the rare stuff for people to come in to see it. Otherwise, we're just like everybody else. These are more for collection. Like pieces like this are so hard to get in a, like an authentic one of them. So I don't want to ever sell it just to have it to legit check the other ones. Cause sometimes it comes down to the weight of the bear break. Mm. They make great fakes now. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. This is crazy. This is this is like I want to say this is what like 65? 30, 30 grand, 40 grand, 50. Like, I don't think we've ever opened this up for anybody. Yeah. So it's literally the most ignorant thing you can have at your house. Right. Cause it's yeah. Not usual. <laughs> So this is one of 150. This was an LV club with Murakami. Yo, that's dope. I, I've never seen that. 
That's yeah, it's one of my favorite pieces in the store. And like things like this, I don't just pull the trigger on. I gotta find out if it's legit. You know what yeah. I mean? I do my research. Keep them. Cause like, I don't like to buy stuff just over the internet. I like to meet them, make an actual genuine connection so we could do like real business. You know what I mean? Not that one time quick. Right, right. Just like yeah. a flip for them. No, 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 yeah. Like I tell people like you can, like $40, if you give somebody $40 off to them, it's $40, but it could be something bigger. It's not always about the money. You kind of want to spend, that money is worth different to different people. You guys, hey. that's just a, that's just business that's knowledge. Business online nobody ever goes out anymore people still want to wear clothes go out to a store so these type of stores will always exist otherwise where are these people wearing these clothes to i really i'm trying to figure this out <laughs> they take in the picture and then they take it off always, yes folding it yeah, yeah, yeah. sliding it back into the package yeah, yeah, yeah. i think it's cool because you're you know you come inside to the store and buy stuff and and learn about the culture but you're saying the way you got all the stuff into the store was by being outside meeting people everything in this store is connected to a person i remember everybody who sold us everything yo i hope you guys were enjoying that video there's more but right now i'm going to tell you about privacy.com if you are a sneakerhead or anybody who is into resale items or collectibles you know that feeling of hesitancy when you come across a site that you're not familiar with it's scary you know those sites where you think it's probably legit but you're just not sure Privacy.com allows you to go ahead and actually pull the trigger on those items at a very low risk because you know your bank and identity information will be protected by creating virtual card numbers instead of using your actual real card number. Finding the items you actually really want online can be stressful enough, so Privacy.com gives you one less thing to worry about. Plus, and maybe most importantly, Privacy.com is free. There's a Chrome extension to save time. There's skins for cards for the retailers you use the most often. And it even has a merchant versus burner card option where the burner card is only going to work once for the amount that you set. If you're trying to cop those shoes on release day, you know how precious every second is. The extension saves you so much time and allows you multiple opportunities to get the shoe. This level of control over your cards is great even for free trials online. Sometimes those are super difficult to cancel or you forget to or you forget your login. So why not just use privacy.com to create a card with a limited amount like $1 just to get the trial started. Then the virtual card you created for the trial can't even be charged more. Plus it's all organized in an easy to use aesthetic interface. We're about to check out an exclusive <laughs> Lamborghini. Just so fully exposed. Whoa. what it sounds like? I never knew what a Lamborghini sounded like. Why don't you explain to people what, what we're looking at? Centenario was 100, so it would have been his birthday when this came out. Oh, okay. So they made 20 roadsters, 20 coupes. This is one of the roadsters, and there's only two fully exposed carbon fiber ones. One's here, and the other one's in a museum by Lambo. It's a couple mil. Couple mil, a couple, a couple mil. mil. Oh, yeah. An art piece, really. You can't really drive this anywhere. You'd have to have security to stand by the car. Right. There's, there's, there's nothing, there's no roof. It doesn't come with a roof. Usually, roadsters will come with like a removable roof. Okay. This one came with nothing. Gosh. And yeah, even the rings, like each of these rings will go for maybe 50k. Oh my God. What, what is the overall like, in a, to end it off, you know, our time here at ODTO, like what what, we, what's the impact? If what we did can start a new generation of kids that do something great, we won. A lot of kids we see coming in, like younger kids that I know are going to do something dope. Do you know what I mean? So it's what it's for, like actually build another community. Especially people coming to a store like this, I don't want you guys to feel like this place like, oh, it's like too expensive, let's just leave. You know what I mean? I don't want you guys to feel awkward. Just come in, just see something, talk to me. I have an angry face, but like, I'm actually a funny guy, you know what I mean? I actually make jokes like I'm hilarious. <laughs> There's hilarious. There's right, 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 right. <laughs> come talk to us, ask me any question. There is no stupid questions, and don't think you're ever wasting my time. There's none of that. Like, we want Toronto to be great. So, yeah. So, Yo, it's real, man. Shy, man. Shy, Bro, thank you. Man. That, that, uh... And when I have guys like you come and appreciate what we're doing, that makes that that makes everything worth it. Because, like, you guys, you guys appreciate this stuff. You guys know what it takes. You guys know a lot about this stuff. So, when you, I see you guys have this reaction, like, this means more than anything. Clippers. All right, so one thing in Canada that I noticed is that they give you 
the card reader yourself so that they can't punch a no different number. You have to click, okay, I approve. You're doing it yourself. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little hard when you uh, are at the bar and you've been drinking and you're just like, I, I, I had it the other day, I was like, really trying hard to make sure I press the right button. It was like, tip how much? I was like, don't hit, don't hit number four. All right, man, that was OD Toronto. That was a really dope store. Was, no, a lot of knowledge, crazy. man. Yeah, a lot was, of knowledge, man. Shout out to Sha. 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 He, man, they are on to something there because they're trying to bring something back to the streetwear and sneakers that it has sort of left the game. Oh, we're kind of hungry. Yes. And there's only one place we really need to go. Yeah. Tim Hortons, Poutine, pretty oh, good. All right. All right, Sam, where are we headed? All right, we're headed to Yorkdale. We're on the TTC, also known as the worst and best subway system because there's a lot of delays sometimes. But here we got, we're at Osgood Station. Gonna go to Yorkdale Station. Yo, Osgood, that sounds like we're in Europe, Andrew. Osgood. Osgood. We're going to Osgood. <laughs> then, hey, David, I'll meet you at Yorkdale. <laughs> What's going on everybody? We are here at the Yorkdale Mall and we are outside of Plus. We're here with the owner, Andy. Um, oh, you just say what's up. <laughs> what's up? Okay. <laughs> so Andy is, also, Andy is also the owner of Tame. How long has this been open for? Uh, so this location, uh, we opened uh, around uh, six months ago. Six months. How's it been? I mean, introducing it to what is considered like a very mainstream market, exactly. right? Because this culture used to be very niche at one point, maybe even five, 10 years ago. Now it's almost, broken a lot more into the mainstream. So we got a lot of people that don't understand it, right? They come in, they're like, they're like, what the hell? Like $5,000 for a pair of sneakers, you know what I mean? They're, and then they'll, there's some negative feedback, but like, it's it's it's, it's all positive, because like, it opens, it opens like the majority of like, the population to this You're kind of stuff. You're exposing people to We're it. exposing I think that's people, important. And that's, that's always good. I actually never seen the Bear Bricks hold up sneakers. We had like a lot of things going on before, right? And if you see our older Instagram pictures, we had like, a lot of weird displays going on, but they, they figured this out. I was like, wow, this looks dope. And we're keeping it going like this for a little bit. What do you think about the blue off white? I like the tint of blue. I think I like it's a blue. blue. It really pops. It, it really pops. Oh my gosh. This, I've actually haven't seen this in person, uh, or maybe once before. This is Kanye's, I think, second collab ever in his life for, on any shoot. It was after the first Bape one. He had a first Bape one, and then he had these, and then he had uh, the Nikes, man. Oh, my business partner, he's actually down over there. He He's a big, like, collector of decks, you know what I mean? Actually, one of our clients in Vancouver, he's the one that bought the the Sotheby's auction for the 800,000 800, US for all the decks ever made. The kid that bought it, he's actually like just got out of high school, he's like 18. He's in class, his dad calls him, he's like, you still want the decks from that auction? He's like, and he's just in class, and he's like, oh, and then he tells his teacher to go wash him, and he's in the bathroom, like offering $800,000 US on this deck set in his high school bathroom. <laughs> All right, let's go check out some sneakers. So now Kawhi Leonard, of course, with New Balance. Uh, this sneaker came out during the championship run. You know what the weird thing about the Kawhis is? They still haven't dropped yet. They the basketball the shoes. The Omni, yeah, the, Omni. the Omni one still didn't drop yet, and yeah, they've generated yeah. so much buzz. The, the pairs are going for what, 800 to 1,000? People were lining up for hours for a New Balance shirt. A New Balance t-shirt, people were lining up for hours. That's how you know the hype like, is that's real. That's how you know I, the hype is real. I, I, had, I had never seen a sneaker company reverse its fortune that quickly. This one was crazy. What, what is this going for? Uh, there's a price right oh, 625. Now. 625. So it's on a new balance. Dog, is it gonna be crazy how sometimes people are now gonna be walking in to a consignment store asking for some new balances? And they're not even gonna be able to get them. Uh, which Raptor colorway is I better? Think this is the OVO one, right? Oh, yeah, this is the OVO sure, yeah. So, this is the OVO one. This, they released this at the same time the championship run. And this is the one that got uh, that got discontinued because Drake was gonna go to Nike, he was gonna go to Adidas maybe, that whole hype thing, and then he stayed with Nike. And then they re-released re them during the championship run. It's 
in my opinion, no offense, guys, it's not a, it's not an amazing looking shoe really or anything. So it's crazy. Um, if you if you're into like vintage like clothing, vintage. Raptors colorway stuff is extremely expensive. Vintage. Like, and I I think it's because the colorways are really good. But like, I just don't like like predominantly black shoe. It's, it's just like. It's just not attractive. Like white shoes are just way nicer. Oh, the Air Max One. We got one. another Toronto exclusive. Air Max One, the six, only released in Toronto, right? Because they canceled uh, the worldwide release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they canceled like the worldwide release, only released in Canada. There was some kind of branding problem with yeah. it or something, right? My favorite part of it is that they whited out the Air Max. The oh, Air that's Air yeah, that's you rarely ever see that. You, you rarely ever see that. The fact that you have that there. That's actually what makes it suit. Like, came out, I didn't even know if it was like an actual like Nike release. I thought it was like maybe someone did a, like a bunch of customs and like put it out because like, it just came out of nowhere. It's just like, just like boom. Yeah. Lundmark. Yeah, can we talk about Lundmark? Yeah. I actually like the Lundmark. Obviously, the one that's most eye-catching is this hyperspace, though. Like this is like whoa. I've never seen anything. This is almost like a it's got like a art installation. Yeah. I actually like, like this is salt, right? Oh, analog. Sorry. There's too many knees, man. There's too many knees. You know, when it comes to Yeezys. Did you see that picture where uh, uh, Yeezy was staying with all the samples? Oh yeah. Yeah, the right. the board, yeah. It was crazy, man. Okay. What do you think about the off-white terrace? Oh. Hey, if I'm like a pole vaulter or something, I'm definitely. This is the next about. generation, though. You know how like we love we love Jordans and whatnot. The kids growing up, they're gonna love this. They're gonna love performance-based sneakers, and they're gonna be the one wearing it into street style. I think that's the next generation. Not these. They with used some... to be the bread one, like. And then Sakai is also very, very some famous. Japanese. Three quarter pants with no socks. Uh, <laughs> long story short, where, where do you hope this all goes? I mean, you guys opened up six months ago. I'm sure it wasn't easy to open in here. When I opened like the first Vancouver shop, I was like, oh man, I just want to like make this like a thing locally and just like be like a mom and pop shop and just like always just in the morning get a coffee, open the shop and like just be self-sustaining and like not to make like a lot of money or anything. And then the market just kind of blew up. Like this is what I know. This is. This is what I do. Like I, I dropped out of high school selling clothes, and like that's that's what I've been doing. You know what I mean? Since I was 16. So, come here. Our cousins are from Canada, and uh, this is my first time actually being out in Canada and um, actually interfacing heavily with like a lot of people outside of my family. So it's been dope. It's been love, and just to see all these different things pop up in the last six months, um, it's awesome. You guys are building community. You guys are serving. I'm sure people who have waited a long time to have a physical representation of the things they love online yeah. and studied and been into, so it's dope. Much love. Best of luck with you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, Andy. No problem, no problem. If it sounds like you or somebody you know could use all of these advantages, then go to privacy.com slash fumbros and sign up for a free account. Anybody who signs up off the fumbros link will immediately get $5 off their first purchase. And that's money you can save on your next sneaker purchase or your next subscription service too. So definitely click on the link in the description box down below. That is privacy.com slash fun bros. But right now we're gonna tell you about our must cop Supreme accessories. In our opinion, my whole thing about Supreme accessories is you gotta use it. So for me, I loved it when this Power Station XL with Mophie, Mophie and Supreme came out. Boom, look at that. Wait, that's wireless. And it's wireless too. Yeah. I think the Supreme one's actually a little bit better than the base model, Mophie, okay. because the Mophie has a fabric cover, yeah. but this one has like a rubber cover. Okay. I think the fabric can get dirty. Um, as you guys know, I cut hair sometimes, and getting this Supreme, which I actually got from OD Toronto in the video that you guys saw, um, this is one of my favorite things, man. I'm looking forward to giving my first haircut. Andrew, how many people do you think cop that that don't cut hair? I think most people who copped it try to cut hair. That's I, did, I, I did so. see a lot of barbers with that. Yeah, I saw a lot of barbers with this. I'll say this, the one thing that I was able to get with the privacy.com was uh, the Porter waist bag. Oh yeah, I've yeah. Been, I've been looking for You've a waist bag for a waist bag because you wanted to carry a lot of stuff. I finally looked through end clothing and I found a Porter waist bag that I really wanted. And um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Hey David, by the way, I think I could clean you up man, a little bit. All right, guys, thank you so much to privacy.com. Remember, you will get $5 off if you sign up through our link right down below, privacy.com slash fun bros. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that Toronto streetwear sneaker crawl. We went to uh, OD, we went to Plus. Yo, Sam, thank you for showing us around. No worries, man, my pleasure, boys. Six reviews. Sam, my pleasure. Um, my major takeaways, 
are that um, there's definitely less shops, but the shops that do exist that are based around like streetwear, sneaker culture, they're definitely, they know their stuff probably even better. Yeah, and I, going off of that, my takeaway was that think about it we were talking to the owners of these shops and the owners they knew so much and they were so talkative and they were so nice to us um, I do think that that kind of attitude especially in the streetwear and sneaker realm is kind of hard to find especially for people who are dealing with you know up to hundreds of thousands and millions very, of dollars very cool material of, items yeah very cool material items they, they have a lot of knowledge you know they take it very seriously and they're willing to share that information it, with you and it is true that uh, I don't want to just say only in America but it is easy for the game to get really elitist kind of snobby I'm I mean, I've done videos where I didn't talk to the owner, but in this video, we literally talked to the owners of the store. So, you know, of course, they were willing to drop a lot of knowledge, and they were very, you know, nice about things. And being nice, possibly the Canadian way. That's right. Yeah, guys, man, honestly, the culture here is great. I'm glad that you guys got to finally check it out. And as a younger brother, as the Canadian, the American younger brother, as we're like known as, yeah, man, it's a pleasure, and it's good to that you guys recognize that Toronto has game too, you know? I, I, re I definitely recommend anybody from the States the USA, United States, definitely come to Toronto, check it out, and hit up this guy, six reviews. AKA Average Asian, AKA Kilpo. Hey, and redefining like, the average Asian. Do you got any more of these shirts? This is my brand, it's my brand, dude. It's my brand. Where, where can they find it? K-Y-O-P-O -O with an underscore on it. We ship worldwide. I'll, get, I'll, I'll give the Fung Bros one after, you know, we got it. Thank you so much for watching that video. In the comments below, let us know any other streetwear or sneaker scene you guys want us to check out around the world. We'll try to go there. Everybody, also let us know any other spots in Toronto we should check out in the future. Till next time, we out. Peace. Peace.